Welcome to Tech Shorts, a collection of hints, tips, and tricks to make you a more effective ServiceNow developer. I'm Chuck Tomasi. In this video, I'll introduce you to the basics of adding a language and translating customizations to make your instance international. As rumored in a previous episode, our organization is doing an acquisition of Chica Limited in Mexico, and they want everything in Spanish right away. ServiceNow makes it easy to translate the standard text elements on the screen quickly, as well as identify any gaps so you can translate your customizations. Just a quick note, you may hear the terms localization, internationalization, and translation used interchangeably in this video and in your project to include other languages. Step 1 is to activate the Spanish Translations plugin to address the standard ServiceNow text elements. This is located under System Definition, Plugins. I'll search for plugins where the name contains Spanish. There it is. From here, I can simply right click and select Activate slash Upgrade. This message tells me there's one dependency to this plugin that installs the core internationalization routines, so I'll accept it by clicking Activate. After a few minutes, the plugin is installed and the majority of my text is translated. Because my safety app only has a limited number of custom messages so far, I can add them manually. So for step 2, I'll go to System UI, Messages, and find the entry I put in my script that starts with safety. The key is how the script retrieves the message, so I don't want to change that, but I do want to change the language to Spanish and the message being output. Once that's done, I'll use the Insert option from the Form menu to create a new record for the Spanish translation. That's great for the text I know needs translating, but there may be lots of other translations needed apart from my application. ServiceNow has a way to identify those as well. For step 3, I go to the System Localization menu option and click the pencil icon. In the related list of modules, there are several that are deactivated by default. I'll change the active field on these from false to true. And when the application menu on the left gets done automatically refreshing, I can generate a list of the four major areas to translate. Translated name slash fields, messages, field labels, and choice. I invite you to take a look at the reference material at the end of this video to find out more about where these options apply to the various parts of the system. Let's take a look at those untranslated messages. I'll export this list to Excel and send it to a translation service. When it comes back, I can re import it via the import sets that were loaded with the plugin. I can do the same for translated name slash fields field labels, and choices. Let's do a quick test of my Send to IT button in Spanish. I'll impersonate Alejandro Mascal, our new safety tech in Juarez. Now that Spanish is available, Alejandro can choose that as his default language under the Settings menu. He goes to the Safety Issue table, opens a record, and clicks Enviar a IT. And there's our incident created message in Espanol. This is a quick demonstration of how you can begin to add language support to your custom application as well as your entire system. You can find out more about multiple languages, translating your instance, along with any other references or code mentioned in this series at the links listed here. I also invite you to visit developer.servicenow.com to get a free developer instance, to try the concepts demonstrated in this video, and learn more about building business applications fast on ServiceNow. Be sure to watch the other videos in this series to be a more effective ServiceNow developer. Thanks for watching.